What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 91 of the Charge to the Top here with Hereford FC and today we are back with the second live com of the season. Today we take on Middlesbrough, it's going to be 12th versus 11th, a mid-table battle and well, mid-table is where we lie, of course the top half finish, the aim for this year and well so far... Not so good, I guess you could say. Of course, last episode, if you didn't see it, we went over our opening to the season. We also beat Bournemouth, which was a good little result. And, uh, well, you can see since then, a bit of a mixed bag, including a shock defeat against Aston Villa in the EFL Cup. Of course, a side who we beat in the playoff final just a few years ago. Anyway, the first game in this run of fixtures, it was against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Newly promoted, Lukaku scored for them. Yes, Lukaku playing for... Uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers. What a weird time we live in. He is currently out injured, but while well, the 33-year-old, a very talented player, and uh, you can see they took an early lead in this game, and at half-time, three, uh, well, one nil down. We needed a miracle, and the miracle came. Mark Torres, man of the match performance by this guy. Two goals, one assist. The American really making his mark on the side. He didn't have a great debut against Bournemouth, but in this game, he was the difference maker out on the right-hand side. And well, what a win it was! A great fight back from behind. The next game we had against Plymouth, four nil result, fairly standard. You know, taking on a you know a slightly smaller side. I decided. Decided to play the full strength team. I really want to get the team gelling with one another. You can see Torres did pick up a little bit of an injury, which is a bit of a shame. He has recovered from it since. If we look at that injury, you can see it was just a bruised head. So nothing too seriously, uh, or too serious, fortunately, uh, for us. So that was a good result. But following on from that, three defeats in the row in the, league, in the league. Now you look at these games against United, Watford and Chelsea. You'd expect us to try and get sunk against Watford. Perhaps the United and uh, Chelsea game's not so surprising. The first game, 5-0 defeat, was embarrassing. We went two goals down the last 10 minutes. I rolled the dice. We went more attacking. They scored three goals. I feel like the scoreline as a whole flattered United, although they did absolutely run rampant in the game. The next match we had against Watford, it was a kind of midweek fixture. You can see at 8 o'clock at night. And, uh, well, our players, they just weren't up for the fight. They finished 3-1. You can see, actually, Watford, they do have a very, very good side here. Um, they've got players like Depay, uh, Chalabur, Martin Odegaard, Tyrone Mings. Uh, and, yeah, they've got a really talented team, to be honest. And, of course, Kevin Kelly, he came on off the bench, our former man. He didn't score against us this season, so that was one little silver lining there. The next game we had against Chelsea, it was a narrow defeat. It finished 1-0. Um, I felt like we fought pretty hard in this game. You can see Ali picked up man of the match, the Turkish player. He's had a pretty good start to his time at the club. Six appearances, a 7.42 average rating. Uh, looking like he could be a very, very good centre-back for us this year. Unfortunately, despite a man of the match performance by him, 1-0 uh, is how it finished. The next game against Villa, I don't want to talk about it. I'm still salty. We lost on penalties. Mustafa Hamdi got sent off. Um, you can see Akusu missed a crucial penalty. That is what lost us the tie. And, uh, yeah, just a little bit, I guess, disappointing all in all. You can see Brad Lynch, our former man, on loan from Middlesbrough at Villa. He scored the winning penalty. Like a dagger through my heart it was, uh, kind of seeing him get that goal. Anyway, after that game, four defeats in a row. Obviously, we have started kind of using a new system. I decided... Things have to change. I have to do something different. And the change I made was, instead of having our centre mid on attack in the centre mid position, we moved him up into an attacking midfielder position on support. So, a little bit more attacking in that regard. Um, it just helps, I think, support the complete forward that little bit more in the final third. And while well, you can see, the first game with this new system, we annihilated Arsenal 3-0. Kasongo, two goals for him. Top, top tr performance by this guy. Continuing to improve a little bit, which is fantastic to see. And uh, yeah, five goals for him so far this season. Looking like he could be our big goal-scoring threat. Jamie Price also chipped in with a goal. Good for this guy, you know, a player who he's been at the club a number of years now this year. Kind of finding himself phased out of the first team, even last year, really. Um, but a good way, I guess, to reintroduce himself uh, with both a goal and an assist in this game against Arsenal. Anyway, the most recent game we had against Everton, it was an entertaining game. Palmy's annoyed I didn't live comment. You can see uh, Everton took a 2-1 lead going into half-time. In the second half, we made it 2-2 in the 80th minute. Mark Torres, the American winger, coming back. Brannigan scored again for them to make it 3-2. And in the 88th minute, Fred Kasongo with the third goal in the last 10 minutes ensured we got a share of the spoils. Another big goal for him. 
And, uh, well, another big performance. You can see Gavin Brannigan, pretty good attacker, this guy, at 21 years old, on loan uh, from Newcastle. And, uh, well, he has caused us a few problems. Of course, if you watched last episode, you'll know we had a little bit of transfer budget remaining, kind of going into the end of the transfer window. And, well, we've spent it. We've brought in a few more players, the first of which, a familiar face, Mino Siciliano. He's returned to the Costa Rican, a player who he sold to Spartak Moscow a number of years ago now for £300,000 for £2.4 million. We've re-signed him for £2.3 million. Just a good little bit of backup in the centre mid position. You can see 23 years old. Don't think he's that likely to improve, um, but very, very low wages. Was able to get him in for a, a fairly cheap fee. Just add some nice strength in depth there. The next few players, players who, um, they really are just depth options, I guess. You know, if we get a lot of injuries, if we need to rotate the team, I feel like these two players can really make a difference. The first of them, Osvaldo Raquelme here. Chilean international, 22 years old, can play striker, can also play out on the left, which is very useful because we were lacking a few players out on the left. And the other player we brought in, um, Miguel Alacon, uh, again, another Chilean, uh, 14 international appearances for this guy, 21 years old. Pretty excited about this guy, to be honest. He's still young, he's still, you know, got some room to improve. Um, if we just look at his contract, you can see he has got a minimum release clause of £20 million, which I'm not all that happy about. But, well, you can see here, we brought him in for £5.25 million. I think he could be a pretty good winger for us going forward. You know, maybe not necessarily going to start a whole lot of games, but in terms of just adding that strength and depth, he's definitely a good option for us. The last player we brought in, Jamie Jones from Everton. Just a, a Welsh international goalkeeper. Uh, we did end up selling Chucky, of course, uh, in the summer, and I never really got in a replacement for him. And I feel like Jamie Jones here, he's a good option. You know, he's, he's a well-rounded goalkeeper. You know, homegrown in terms of being homegrown in uh, the England and in the Premier League. And, uh, well, for £4.5 million, it's not a cheap fee we've paid for him. But I think he can be a pretty solid player for us this year as a good backup. In terms of players on the outs, if we just look at it here, there were a few players who left on loans towards the end of the, the window. We did also sell Esri Concer. I can't remember if I mentioned that last episode. I think I did, actually. I feel like that was just before the start of the season. But if I didn't... He did leave us, which was a little bit sad, but we did make some nice money off that deal, of course. He joined West Brom, he's gone back to West Brom, and we made some profit, so I, I'm happy about that. In terms of our finances, you can see we find ourselves just a little bit in the red. Um, there's a little bit of wage budget left over, not a lot of transfer budget, really. Of course, a top half finish, the aim this year. But I'm really, really happy with this squad now. Obviously, you saw I brought in a few more players to add strength and depth. But when you look across our team as a whole now, in the majority of positions, we have plenty of coverage, which is really, really good to see because strength and depth is something that we have perhaps struggled with in recent years. And I feel like you look at our team now, you know, we've got a minimum of five players who can play every single position. And that is just a great area to be in. We do, of course, have quite a large squad at this point. You can see if I just select through all these players. There's a 33-man first-team squad, which is perhaps a little bit too large. Because we have a fair few players under the age of 21, they don't have to be registered for the first team in the Premier League. They're automatically eligible, so we don't kind of go over the registration limits there. There are a few players who I've kind of set to be available for the reserves to get them regular football there. And uh, really, this is a squad that's built with the African Cup of Nations in mind, of course, the AFCON um, tournament is going to be going on this year and we could lose I believe it's up to seven kind of players from various um, African nations for well a month period and so it's going to be a little bit of a test I guess when we get to January time of our strength and depth um, you know depending on how key some of the players are who end up leaving us to go to that competition. But anyway, you know, despite a little bit of kind of struggle as of late, we've kind of got things back on the straight and narrow. A win here against Middlesbrough would see us kind of cement some top half aspirations. A defeat here would kind of stall and perhaps kill off any momentum we've kind of built up over the last two games. You can see we really were struggling for goals in that kind of four game losing run. I'm hoping that today we are going to have goals in and amongst, uh, I guess, everywhere really. You kind of look at the team. We've got lots of goal scorers, but it's about one or two of these goal scorers really stepping up and getting a lot more for us. Uh, Tomohisa Kato did go out on loan. I don't know if I mentioned that transfer. It's always confusing when I do deals after the start of the season because I can never remember which I have and haven't talked about. But he's out on loan. Um, Fred Harris, you know, he's made a few appearances. The South African, a player who I do want to play, you know, first team football when I can this year. Um, he's not the greatest start to his time at the club. He is only 19, though. Um, but he is going to be an option for us on the bench today. Anyway, in terms of the starting eleven, fairly standard, but we'll go for it super quickly. Mannion is in goal, the English goalkeeper. Has now made an appearance to the international team. Great for him. At left back, we go with Diata. At right back, we go with Prince Asamoah. Our normal right back option of Andy O'Neill. Struggling a little bit with his condition. You can see 87%, so he gets a rest today. 
Yeah, similar situation actually in the centre of the defence. I talked about how well Ali has been playing at centre back. He is struggling a little bit with fitness, so I'm giving him a rest today. As a result, Alexandro, who've joined us from Besiktas, comes into the side. A very talented kind of Brazilian centre back. You know, perhaps not the most aggressive of centre backs in the world, but everywhere else, he's a, a very good player, and hopefully, he can turn up big for us today. The 26-year-old, of course, alongside him, we go with Miguel Morales, the Mexican. Ahead of them, it's another Mexican. It's Pinero playing that kind of deep line playmaker role, really kind of trying to pull the strings from deep. Slightly ahead of him, we of course go with Lustal, uh, the Argentina player who is the player to watch out for on this side. This guy has so much talent. I'm excited to see how he gets on. You can see he is just coming back from a twisted ankle, but he is fit enough to start today's game. And uh, yeah, hopefully he can avoid injury now and continue to develop. Because honestly... This guy is going to be absolutely insane. Um, you know, potential to be a Premier League central defender, fairly consistent performer. You know, a little bit of injury proneness, perhaps a concern there, but if he can avoid injury, he's going to be great for us. Out on the left, we, of course, go with Fred Kasongo. Out on the right, we go with Mark Torres, a player who, as I mentioned, has had a pretty good start to his time at the club. Three goals and one assist so far. Hopefully, he can chip in with some more today. Jonathan Chan is going to play at centre attack in mid today. The reason for that is the fact that Juan Carlos Acuna It'd be fair to say this guy's not had the greatest start to his time at the club. You can see a 6.7 average rating across six league games. I want to change things up. He is going to be certainly a very good option to have on the bench. But Jonathan Chan, who was a regular first team player for us last year, he has been playing fairly well. He played very well last year and I feel like he deserves a chance this year once more. Anyway, to round off our starting 11, we go with uh, Silla up top on the bench. Loads of options. Andy O'Neill and Ali, as I already mentioned. Jeff Valenzuela, the young kind of American deep line playmaker, is an option. He's got his first goal for America recently. We have one Carlos Acuna. Choi Min Ki can play anywhere across the attacking midfielder kind of line. The 26 year old, definitely a great impact option to have. And uh, just a few more players. We've got Cameron Bowman and Fred Harris. Of course, Bowman top top player continuing to improve a lot the 20 year old i'm really excited to see what this guy can achieve going forward and well with that kind of pace that he has he is going to be a real fear factor i feel like on the bench for us today anyway let's see how we get on this is a big game for us because we are 12th right now middlesbrough one place above us so a good result here could put us in good stead worth noting however middlesbrough they've only lost one game in their opening seven they have drawn four however so they are struggling for wins too but it's going to be a challenge, I guess, for us to try and break them down. We're playing the new isometric system. It seemed to have worked so far kind of relatively well, and hopefully we can see it be successful once more today. That has certainly got to be the aim. Good little reaction from the team as a whole from that team talk. We are at home today. Let's see how we get on. This is uh, going to be a little bit of a test of our system. You can see Jonathan Chan, number 23, playing that you know new centre attacking mid role. He is going to play a little bit higher up, but he is on the support duty so he will drop deep when needed. And while Kasongo turns his man there, if we can have Kasongo creating space like that down the line, I'll be very happy. And Alexandro, that could have been his first ever goal for the club. He's not the greatest defender in the air, Alexandro, the, the Brazilian. But that was a great opportunity. You have to wonder, would Ali have scored it if he was playing and not being rested today? Anyway, there's going to be another chance here. They are in possession of the ball, but we're pressing quite high up the pitch here. Rooney out on the right. Diata dispossesses him. Lovely ball through to Kasongo. By Lustau. Can the ball come in? It can. Silla near post. It's cleared away somehow. That was a really good opportunity. It might still uh, not be over here, although that ball through a little bit disappointing, but it is still wide with Kasongo, who's been very involved in early, kind of the early action here, and he's involved again here, cutting inside. Can he pull it across? Silla's there. He has an effort. Rykovic tips it, but it might still not be over. Torres tries to hook it back to the edge of the box, can't quite pull it off. And, uh, well, Middlesbrough, they're on the back foot early on. It's a good start for our team. But we do need to try and score with this good player, Marcilla. He's clean through. Can he make something happen? He goes very wide here, pulls it back. Torres is there. I thought Silla was about to shoot and I was about to get very upset. But this is not FM16. This is FM17, where players do actually pull back crosses from narrow angles. And it was a lovely ball in the end. Torres doing a very nice job of following up. The former PSG man, a player who he's had multiple stints in the Premier League without really having an impact in on loan uh, from PSG, where he's, be, where he's been loaned out from. He's joined us on a permanent basis, and, well, that's his fourth goal of the season already from the right wing. The ball is pulled back superbly into that space. Torres makes a fantastic run, but the ball itself was on a plate. Keeper needed to come out and intercept it. He didn't. And, uh, well, we are dominating this game early on. We are having a lot more of the ball, although it has now started to even out. We've created a lot of chances too, but we do need to stay switched on as Silla 
Makes a lovely tackle there. Jacobs goes in from behind. Send him off, ref. Get him off the pitch. He is off the pitch. Jacobs has lost his head, everyone. It's 1-0 to us. Middlesbrough are down to 10 men, and this is going to be a very long day in the office for them, you'd think. Although, set piece here. We need to deal with it. Mannion. Nice save. I mean, they might be down to 10 men. They might be a goal down. We do have to respect Middlesbrough, though, because they do have capabilities to score. But, well, you expect us to go out now and really kill off this game. As Kasongo, he's through. He squeezes in. The keeper should do better. He didn't do better. It's 2-0 here. Kasongo's looked rampant down this left-hand side in the opening 20 minutes. It's another goal for us. And, uh, well, this could turn into a very long afternoon here. That's a... Wait, wait. What was that pass by Silla? Sorry, we're going back. We're going... What was this flick that he does? Let's just, let's just try and break it down. Oh, lovely. Through his legs. A little flick through his legs. Great ball through to Kasongo, and he, he squeezes it in. Lovely finish. Right. There. I enjoyed that far too much. I feel like the fancy little flicks you get in FM's match engine now. You just have to savour them all. You have to look at them all. And that was a, a cheeky one right there. And, uh, well, 2-0 up. Can we just help our goal difference? I guess now is the real question. You know, we play a very attacking system. What what system are Middlesbrough going to be playing here? Like, are they are they going to be trying to get back into this game? I feel like they probably have to be. You can see they're just playing a man short out wide on the right, which is probably why Kasongo is getting so much kind of space. Part of me is tempted now to switch our left wing back onto more attacking. I think we're going to do that. He's not going to have as much to deal with Diata here. He can. He can really have a go, to be honest, as a complete forward on attack at trying to make something happen down this wing because Middlesbrough, they're not going to be doing a whole lot there and there's going to be a lot of space for him to try and exploit, I imagine, on this left-hand side. Of course, he has got to kind of stick to his defensive duties when he can, but yeah, he's got lots of space to roam into. And well, speaking of space to roam into, we are knocking the ball around superbly here. You can see Diata out on this left-hand side. Loads of space. Can he pick out a cross? He does. Still a near post. That is why we've put Diata on complete forward on the tank. He finds some space out wide there. Part of me is curious to see if Middlesbrough might change their system. I'm going to keep this open just so we can see. But yeah, Diata, loads of space here. The fullback, obviously, loads to worry about with Kosongo as well, kind of tucking inside into the channel. That created the space. Lovely ball by Diata. Lovely finish by Silla. And, well, there could be a fourth here before the break. Ball whipped in. Cleared his way as far as Torres. He might put it back out wide. He goes, actually, back in the middle. Kasongo here. Can he pull it back? He does. Silla. Is that a hat-trick for him? Yeah, no, it's, a, it's his second goal. I've lost count. I've lost count of who's scoring our goals. Silla. He got one in the 41st minute or 42nd minute. He's got another one just two minutes later. Could he be on for a quick little hat-trick? Kasongo. Lovely ball across. It's another really nice goal. A really well-taken opportunity. We've created a lot of crossing chances so far in this game. And, uh, well, I don't think you could wish, really, for a better first half than this. 4-0 at the moment. Middlesbrough have just changed their system as well at half-time. Uh, it looks like it's going to be damage limitation for them. They're playing a 5-3-1. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, Asamoah, you can go on attack now, my, mate, uh, my man, because they are just playing so defensively here that um, we don't actually have that much to worry about. Part of me is thinking about just switching to this. It's ridiculously attacking, but it, we can afford to be, I feel like, at this point. They're playing with one striker. Perhaps I'm being a little bit silly. If we concede one, might revert it back, but I feel like I want to just try and score as many as we can. You can see the way Middlesbrough are playing right now, they are going to be playing so defensively in the second half. There is going to be, I think, limited opportunities for them going forward. And so, we don't really have a whole lot to worry about. You can see they have switched now to having a right winger. I mean, that's brave of them. Um, but yeah, really, you can see they're just tinkering away. But, I mean, when you're down to 10 men and you're 4-0 down away from home, it's almost a little bit late to go damage limitation. But, I mean, they're trying to just kill off this game. 10 minutes left in it. I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to bring on some younger players. We're going to bring in Jeff Valenzuela for a bit of football. Akuna's going to come on for Jonathan Chan. And I think we'll bring in Cameron Bowman as well for Kasongo, who is just tiring a little bit. You know, get some fresh legs on there. Uh, Kasongo has played absolutely superbly today. And, uh, well, we're going to try and make some more happen here. Lustau, edge of the box, hits it. I don't feel like that should ever go in. I think Rykovic has made a mistake there. But it's 5-0. Jeff Valenzuela, the sub, with the assist. Welcome to the first team, my friend, of course. Valenzuela, a player we actually signed a few years ago, back when we were in the championship. Uh, couldn't move to us because he was in the USA for a few years. 
Um, then went out on loan, has now played regularly in the Cypriot League for Apoel. And, uh, well, he got a work permit. He's playing regular first-team football for the national team. And now he's a Premier League centre midfielder. And, well, there could be more here. Bowman, fantastic effort. I mean, it's a good save in the end by Rajkovic. But you kind of get the feeling it's just a little bit too little, too late here today. Bowman back into the mixer. Cleared away, but only Yatta. I don't feel like there's any more goals left in this game. I feel like Middlesbrough, as far as they're concerned, this second half, they've restored a little bit of pride, perhaps, to only lose the second half 1-0. I mean, Ambrose, he could score here. They are clean through. I mean, not with a finish like that. That was perhaps Middlesbrough's best chance of the game, and it has gone way, way wider the mark here. And, well, the full-time whistle is only moments away. What a performance this has been. Of course, the sending off helped us out massively. But, uh, well, we took advantage of the man advantage. We've scored plenty of goals. A good confidence-building performance. And hopefully, we can build some more momentum off this result. Very reminiscent, if I'm honest, of the result we had against Arsenal, where we won 3-0 with some fantastic attacking play. Hoping for more of that, obviously, going forward. It does see us move up to sixth. Granted, we have played a few more games than everyone else. You can see at the top of the table, uh, Manchester City, early on, they are pulling quite far ahead this early on in the season. Uh, United also doing well. They've conceded one goal so far in their opening eight games of the season. They've yet to lose as well with three draws. But um, yeah, what a performance that is. Silla with two, Kasongo with one. A very good day in the office. And hopefully, you know, armed with our new system, armed with, well, confidence, hopefully sky high after that result, um, we can, you know, put in another top performance in the next few games. Because we've played some tricky games now. We've played Manchester United, we've played Chelsea, we've played Arsenal. Man City, you know, only a few games away, and Liverpool are also going to be tricky. But when you look at our fixtures, really, between now, you know, Wolves and Swansea, there's only really Manchester City and Liverpool who scare me at the moment. I'll, I'll be honest, you know, Tottenham, they've been struggling for the last few years. Chelsea actually aren't doing that great this year. Liverpool and Arsenal, you know, two good sides. City and Liverpool, obviously the two teams are yet to play who are above us in the table. We did, of course, beat Bournemouth on the first day of the season. Bournemouth are currently in fifth, so they're going very well too. A win for them could actually see them move as high as third. So that win against them on the opening day of the season is looking like a great little result at the moment. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up everything from me. A great episode today as far as I'm concerned. Fantastic result. Hopefully I will see you guys next time. Uh, for the next episode. I don't know who we're going to be taking on. It might be that game against Liverpool. I guess you guys will have to wait and find out. But anyway, that is all from me. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. It's me, Jack. I will see you guys next time. And other than that, I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. <laughs>